Hello friends and welcome to another itemization video. Today we're going to talk about Vladimir's offering, which until I made this video I didn't realize was spelled Vladimir's. Everyone calls it Vlad's anyways, and I'm no linguist so I don't actually know how it's supposed to be pronounced. But this is a pretty uncommon item for supports to buy, and in fact I rarely see supports think to pick it up in lower ranks. And you know, in most cases that really doesn't matter, but I do think it's pretty good in certain situations. And when it is good, I think it's pretty good. So I want to cover it today so that, you know, maybe you can win like a game or two here and there when you pick up this item. So kind of a lot to say on this because it's such a, you know, niche case item. First off, let's break down the stats. It is not that expensive, 2,300, similar to a mech, for example. Um, and I think that's a good comparison. We're going to get to that later. So this is one of the few items that you actually lose some of the uh, stats. So if you take a look at the buildup, you got the Ring of Basilius. Now that is a common support item. Cool. The Lifesteal, that stays in there. And then the, uh, the Blades of Attack, you actually lose that 9 damage in replace of a bonus damage aura, which for the most part is fine. Uh, if you sneak peek down here, you can see that you only need 50 damage to get the uh, bonus 9 damage. So for most of us, Many people start at 50 base damage, and by the time they can actually build a Vlad's, they'll have more than 50 base anyways, so it's not a big deal, but kind of a fun niche fact. Now, these stats suck for supports in the most, most cases. So lifesteal, right? We honestly do not auto-attack that often. We don't have that much attack damage or attack speed. So like the lifesteal is, I mean, no one's gonna complain like, oh, I get some health back on attacks, oh no. Like, it's good, but not that useful for most supports and then same with the bonus damage you know 18 percent bonus damage cool a little bit more damage i really I, I just don't auto attack that often as a support so these two the main part of vlad's really go to waste on a support now the two mana region the upgraded bassy essentially that's pretty good two mana regions nice and in fact it stacks with uh, another basilius it used to not when there is armor attached to these items, but now they perfectly they stack perfectly fine. So if a, for example, an offlaner builds a Vlad's, you can still buy a Basilius, and now you have this sick mana regen for the whole team when both of you are together. So why would you get this item if the stats don't help you at all? Well, you've probably read the slide at this point. It's for your team. Uh, now, it could just be for the carry, actually. As long as it is a game where the carry could benefit from Vlad's, it could be a Vlad's game, but of course it's an aura item, so it, it would be nice if the whole team could benefit from Vlad's. And typically if you're a support building it, it's more likely that the team as a whole will benefit from it uh, rather than only building it for just the carry, but I could still see it happening in a couple niche cases, and we'll talk about that uh, when we cover specific heroes. Now, when I buy Vlad's, it is because I don't need other items. So that can either be because I am a very flexible hero like Marana, where I just, I don't really need any item in particular. I can buy whatever I want. And then nothing in the game, like, calls for anything. I don't need a Glimmer Cape for a Necrophos. I don't need, okay, four staff, you know, four staff for your team, because you have Leap, so you could get away from Clockwork on your own. But let's say, you know, maybe against a Ricky or a Night Stalker, you know, I probably need a four staff first. Um, but let's say they're not in the game, then I, I don't really need an item and I could get a Vlad's pretty early if, if it fits the rest of the criteria. Now, it can come after you purchase certain items as well. You know, you buy a Basilius because it's a good early game item, you build your four staff, you build your Glimmer Cape, and then as you're thinking of a third item, you realize, well, I, you know, there's nothing I really need and you know what, it could be a good Vlad's game. Then it's okay to buy a Vlad's later in the game. You know, so there's no strict time frame on when you can purchase Vlad's. Unlike drums where I said, you know, it's kind of like a first item or no item purchase. Vlad's, it's good at the start and it's even better later. It's got very good scaling value because it gives that percentage bonus damage, which means like, honestly, that's pretty good early and so is the lifesteal. But then your carries and your teammates, they only get more base damage later. So like, it's just good overall. I'll talk about that a little bit over here. The bonus damage only affects base damage. That is the white number here. So Vlad, you see when you have 100 damage, you get plus 17. You might be wondering, 
I thought this had 18% bonus damage. Me too. I don't know how math works, apparently. But you get plus 17 here. Now, even if you have something like a Divine Rapier giving you a ton of bonus damage, when you pick up a Vlad, you'll see that you still have that 17 bonus damage because it's only doing the calculations off this uh, base damage. And base damage comes from your base damage value or from your primary attribute. So if you build a lot of agility as an agility carry, that counts to your base stats or your base damage, and then that gets amplified by Vlad's. For that reason, this is better for agility carries. Why? Let's compare strength to agility carries. <clears throat> Sorry. Agility carries build agility to get more base damage. Strength carries build not as often strength items. Like sometimes they do, but many strength carries tend to build items that either just give them flat bonus damage or like other kiting things. It's not so common for them to just build strength. Whereas agility carries, like, they will. They'll just build agility because it gives them their damage, it gives them attack speed, it gives them armor. It's just an all-around good stat. And of course, they'll build some items that give just damage, but they're much more likely to buy primary attribute items. Furthermore, the armor gives them a lot of effective HP. So let's come down to this graph over here. So here are your attack damages you might see 100, probably on the low end for a carry by the time you can buy a Vlad's. You know, probably up to like 250 is fairly common. And then, you know, these values are more like if your carry were to crit, for example. Now, for one attack, here's their lifesteal. But, of course, a carry is probably going to attack more than once when they're fighting. So I listed uh, five auto attacks here as well just to get some uh, idea of the lifesteal. So you'll see that, you know, let's say they have 200 damage, they attack five times, 150 lifesteal. Doesn't sound, you know, that great. But when you factor in the fact that they probably have about 20 armor, maybe more, maybe less, who knows, um, because they're an agility hero, they are more likely to have more armor, then the effective heal from those lifesteal attacks ends up actually being like 333. Strength heroes tend to have less armor because they don't get to build agility as much, and they don't really get to build just straight up armor as much either. Um, they're kind of forced into like damage and kiting items they don't get as much effective HP from the lifesteal. And that's why agility carries really benefit from Vlad's from both the bonus damage and lifesteal more than say a strength carry and you know very rarely an agility, or I'm sorry, an intelligence carry. And then of course, the higher you go, the better. Now I also wanna point out, let's look at this effective heal. This is actually very similar to a mech. If you think about the price of a mech versus what it can heal, the mech, also requires a ton of mana. Whereas Vlad's doesn't, like you just have to be in the area. So if your team can auto attack fairly frequently and they have like decent right click damage, they can actually heal a lot more than a mech can. And that kind of brings us to these other points here. It's really good for the carry versus carry matchup and for longer drawn out fights. What do I mean by that? The carry versus carry matchup is when very likely it's a four protect one strategy versus another four protect one strategy, or it just so happens that your team's doing badly and only the carry is doing well, something like that. Something where all your hopes and dreams are on the carry. You know, you've been this babysitter support, taking care of your child, they're slowly growing. And then there comes a point in every child's life where they have to fight to the death with another child on the enemy team. And that's, that's how it goes, that's life. And they, you want your child to win. So we have to amplify our child. Now, of course, you could get things like a scythe, orchid, all these other control items to try to like uh, debuff the enemy carry. But when BKBs come out, you know, you're just watching your carries fight each other. This is like what happens in a lot of games. You both, both teams just sit there watching the carry fight because they're both BKB. And it's like, well, none of my spells do anything. You got this, you know, and you're just waiting for BKBs to end or for your carry to win that fight. That's why Vlad's is really good. Vlad's affects your carry through BKB, so even if you can't do anything else, you are providing this bonus damage, bonus lifesteal, and trying to push them over the edge to beat the enemy carry. Uh, and it comes like very close. You know, It's a kind of game where you have like PA versus troll, and PA might use her abyssal on the troll and jump him first, but if she doesn't kill him in that stun time, you know he pops BKB, and then he starts attacking, he attacks faster, 
Maybe he bashes her, and then it's like that fight where like the health bars keep swapping back and forth. They're life stealing, and you're like, oh, who's gonna win? That's where Vlad's is really good to make sure your carry survives through BKBs, and then suddenly the troll's BKB ends, you get to stun him, and now your PA finished the kill or something like that. And then of course, so it could be a long drawn out carry fight, but it could be a long drawn out team fight. And the longer a fight is with right clicks, by the way, then the more likely you're able to benefit from this very effective lifesteal aura and you actually get more heal than say a mech or a greaves just the longer a fight goes you know um, i only list five attacks here but just double it you know 10 attacks in a team fight that's not that weird in a long team fight 20 so on you know some heroes attack really fast think of troll he might hit the enemy carry like 20 times and then just think about how much he's life stealing just from vlad's so yeah that's kind of the breakdown of this item we're going to go into heroes next um so I realize it is kind of this like, uh, not so clear cut item. Um, it's hard to define like, when is it going to be a carry versus carry game? And when is it going to be like long drawn out team fights? Honestly, it's hard for me to say. It's a very game to game basis. So we're gonna cover some of the heroes. I hope that helps settle it. But at the end of the day, it's going to be a bit of just experience on your end. You know, so if you ever find that you look at your items and you think, I kind of have everything I need. And you see you have like a PA, a troll, um, someone you're kind of all in on. Just try it out. Try a Vlad, see how it feels. If it feels terrible, then like maybe that wasn't a Vlad's game. Think about it a little bit. It's kind of hard for me to go any further in detail than what I've put here. Um, so you may lose some games while testing it out, I'll be honest. But once you can identify a good Vlad's game, it's really strong. And... Uh, it's also pretty good, I'll throw it in here, it's pretty good for early tempo lineups, um, just like the drums, if you have a lot of right-click heroes, which, you know, I guess we should just get to the heroes so we can see it. All right, here we are. This is not an exhaustive list as usual. Actually, it used to be an exhaustive list, but nowadays, as we get into these niche items, it's harder to explain who will buy this item. For Vlad's, anyone could buy Vlad's. There are some heroes that benefit from Vlad's a little bit more, and it's a little easier to fit into the skill build. But if you reach a game where you think, I need a Vlad's to push my carry over the edge, then, then it's a Vlad's game. Then it doesn't really matter who you are if you don't have better items to build. But let's list some heroes where they do like to buy it. So Bounty Hunter, when he's played as a support, he likes to buy, well, there's two. <laughs> you might have a Bounty Hunter who only builds straight damage, but a more common build is to build utility by like Greaves, Lotus, something like a Vlad's because you're looking for kills, you're looking to play with your team and amplify them up. And it's very common, especially in lower games, where after you win a team fight, you feel low on health and carries get scared and they just go jungle. So the lifesteal from Vlad's helps them to stay healthier through the team fight and then after the team fight so that they can feel strong enough to keep pushing and keep playing high tempo. That's why it's kind of a, a good tempo item. You're all healthy, so you can just keep going. For that same reason, Chen also fits a Vlad's builder. He wants to play high tempo, play with a lot of people, wants to keep everyone healthy. His ult, pretty high cooldown. So if you just use a Vlad's instead, that is you know slower regen, but overall very helpful. It also provides mana, so you're getting the mana and life steal. It's a very good item to stay healthy on the field as long as your team has right clickers plus all your creeps get a little bit of bonus damage it's not the most in the world but when you have four creeps you know it starts to add up and that kind of fits with every summon hero which you'll see a couple more in a little bit venge another hero who's just looking to boost up her team her passive now gives bonus primary attributes as well they used to be on luna it's a little it's a little weird i kind of forget that this is a thing um, but because she's all about just buffing up her team, you know, Wave of Terror, she's very good at amplifying right-click heroes. Vlad's fits that bill very well. Abaddon as well, another amplify your team support. You're just behind the guy, always providing shields, and guess what? You're even providing more survivability with the lifesteal, the bonus damage. It's pretty solid. And the mana helps you stay on the map because you just have to keep spamming out spells, so two mana regen, really nice. Undying, same idea, doesn't need a lot of items, can buy Vlad's, fits this build where he likes mana regen, likes buffing up his team. Um, but Undying actually happens to benefit from the attack damage a little bit more because he steals so much strength. He has a lot of bonus damage, which is kind of cool. 
Treant, Marana, they're heroes that don't really need any item in particular. They're very flexible with their build, so they could buy a first item Vlad's if they wanted to, if it looked like a good Vlad's game. So that's all they're representing. Now Io. Io's really cool because he, he tethers to a target, he overcharges them to give them a ton of attack speed, and so you're already designed to amplify your carries. Now, I don't know why I'm not glowing, by the way. That's weird. Um, now, with a Vlad's, you provide lifesteal and bonus damage. That's awesome. But while you're tethered to them, you know, overcharge affects yourself as well. So you're going to attack really quickly. And even though it's not that much, now each of your auto attacks is going to lifesteal a little bit, which gets shared with your tethered target. So you're kind of this two-sided uh, regen where your carry is life stealing and now you're life stealing and then later on in the game when you know if you get there the level 25 talent where you attack whoever your targets attacking now that kind of kicks in even more and people like tidehunter and mars not very common supports but anchor smash and god's rebuke both proc on hit things for everything they hit so if they have life steal and vlad is more common for them when Anchor Smash hits like six targets, he life steals off of every single target. So when you use one of their abilities in a creep wave, in a team fight, you life steal a huge amount. So it's very common for them to build Vlads um, if they're a support. But say if they're not a support, if they're your actual offlaner and they're not building a Vlads, they're pretty good offlaners to have to give a Vlads aura too. But if they're supports, I also think like Vlads is pretty solid for them. So these carries now, let's move on. These are carries I think tend to fit this four protect one idea where all I'm thinking about is getting this carry to a good start. They all attack really fast and they have really high carry potential. So Troll, very fast auto attacker. PA, she self buffs and she has really high crits. So both of those benefit from both bonus damage and lifesteal, both of these guys, because they're going to apply it a lot. You know, maybe he only gets some stat items and he only gets like, let's say 20 bonus damage not the most in the world, but then he hits like 20 times. And now you're getting way more than someone who has like 50 bonus damage. That's pretty high. Um, but they like only attack twice. Now Drow, also a very fast auto attacker and classically builds a lot of agility items. So she just really benefits from this item. Ursa, very fast attack speed and fury swipes can lifesteal as you stack further and further. So this gives him a ton of survivability if he's not building any lifesteal himself. Morphling, uh, again, very high agi hero, and if he, he's kind of a mix where he does do a burst build sometimes, and so then he's not going to really get the bonus value out of Vlad's, but a lot of the times you can't win a team fight just off of a burst combo, and he is going to end up man fighting a little bit, and so giving him the Vlad's aura I think is awesome. Now, Gyrocopter and Medusa, let me just cut this real quick. This does not lifesteal. It may seem like it. They both seem like extra auto attacks, but they don't proc on hit effects. So flat cannon does not life steal. However, his agonims, which is very common to build, can life steal. And this is the little side gunner that shoots out. So he is someone who can be your, you know, four protect one carry. Doesn't always build that many stat items to be honest, but the life steal just combos really well with his regular auto attack plus the side gunner, so that even when he's stunned, that side gunner is helping him to stay alive. That's why it's very common for him to build Satanic, but why not give him even more life steal and bonus damage, you know? Now Medusa, split shot does not life steal at the start, but later on when she gets the split shot uses modifiers, which is pretty common to get, then every auto attack does life steal, and now it's crazy hard to kill her. Even if he, she gets all her mana burned, she now can life steal an insane amount with split shot and all your bonus damage giving to her. And it's pretty common for her to build stat items as well, so she gets that nice bonus damage. Now Meepo, probably the fastest tempo hero on here, although Urs is pretty fast tempo as well. Meepo, because he built a lot of stats to go with his clones, the Vlad just ends up being really strong. All the clones are lifestealing, which they already lifesteal a bit, but then you give them their own lifesteal with the Vlads, you give them all a bit of extra bonus damage. It just adds up a ton. You know, he's kind of like, you know, I said summons like add up, even though they get only get a little bit of damage. He's like, let's give a full hero's worth of bonus damage and then just do it like four or five times. Uh, it just, it just ends up being really strong. And he's kind of your, you know, if there's a Meepo in the game, you have to play around the Meepo. He is your position one. 
even if he's in the mid lane and you're just playing around him. So I think buffing him up with the Vlads is great. So these, I think, are heroes that they fit this idea of like the, the four protect one, really benefit from Vlads. I think like when I see these heroes, I think about getting Vlads pretty quickly. Every single carry hero benefits from Vlads though, right? No carry is going to say, I don't want your 18% bonus damage. I don't want this lifesteal. Everyone wants those effects, but some of them just don't make as good use of it. So if there is a carry in your game, whether it's one of these or not, it could still be a Vlads game, but it depends on like who your mid and your off laner might be. And then that kind of helps to decide whether it's going to be Vlad's or not. But these guys, this first list, kind of decide on their own. Like, if I have a troll and four spellcasters, I'm, I'm, I might still get a Vlad's if there's not other items I need, just because I think troll benefits that much off of a Vlad's. But if I had four spellcasters and, like, one of these guys, you know, probably not getting the Vlad's. So, Lone Druid does play pretty fast tempo. You do kind of go around him. But it's all about the bear, and the bear does not have very much base damage, so he doesn't make much use of the bonus damage. He does make use of the, the lifesteal a bit, that's kind of cool, but overall I just think there are better items to go for this guy. Bristleback, same idea, and in fact a lot of these heroes, a lot of their damage just comes from other aspects that are not base damage. So like this guy, every time he casts a spell, he gets a, a warpath stack, that counts as bonus damage, doesn't go to the Vlads. Does get the lifesteal, which is nice, but you know, not as good as like one of these carries. In my opinion, you can disagree, that's fine. Huskar, he gets a lot of his damage from burning. He does really like the lifesteal, but the bonus damage doesn't help him that much. Although he does build a lot of strength items usually, so like still, it's kind of okay. Um, but I personally prefer to give him like armor from a medallion or from like a mech rather than more damage and lifesteal. I feel like this guy has the damage and sustain and what he needs is more like armor, magic resist, or like crowd control. And in fact, many of these carries fit that idea. Broodmother has her own built-in bonus damage and lifesteal. I will say it's pretty cool because all her spiderlings, you know, they only get like one to three damage, but then there's like 40 spiderlings. Now that's adding up. So again, anytime you have summons, Vlad's ends up being pretty nice, but she is a hero that usually just needs help with like crowd control, not damage or sustain. Same with Clinks. A lot of his damage does not count towards Vlad's. SF, Razor. TA, all these guys, you know, they have a lot of damage, but it doesn't come from base damage. It comes from other things. Something like Anti-Mage. Mana Break is a good amount of this guy's damage. Mana Break does not count to the bonus damage. Funny enough, it can be, <laughs> it can lifesteal, actually. Some, some effects, uh, like Fury Swipes and Mana Steal, can proc lifesteal. Some items can as well, like Basher, MKB. Um, but not everything can. So like, I don't think, I don't think this one can, funny enough. Um, I might be wrong on that. Uh, but there is a list on the wiki if you want to look into that further. But I honestly, like, I don't know it that well. So maybe knowing it a bit better would help me fine tune my Vlad's choices. But I don't think you really need to know it that well to be able to pick out a Vlad's. And Monkey King, same deal. Kind of has this built-in lifesteal and damage. And what he needs help on is making sure he gets this off. You know, attacking four times. Um, so providing crowd control or like a medallion to strengthen him up so he survives until he gets this lifesteal, I think is a little better. Though in that same vein, giving him some lifesteal so that he sustains a little bit until he gets the Jingu mastery can also be like kind of good, but it doesn't guarantee that he gets four auto attacks off. And that's why I think buying something that helps provide crowd control is a lot better. Now, Illusion Heroes are kind of funny where they build a lot of stat items. So they really benefit from the bonus damage. And, you know, why not lifesteal? But I just don't think it's as good. And I guess after thinking about it for a while to explain to you guys, I think what it means is like, you know, I use this example, troll jumps PA or vice versa. I don't remember what I said. And they fight to the death. And you know who's the real one, and you're just like praying for like crits and bashes and stuff, and you're like, oh god, please. That's not really how illusion heroes function. They kind of create a ton of illusions, so you're not sure who the real one is, and so then you need to have like AoE damage somehow, spells or like Battle Fury, something like that, to help to damage the illusions faster and figure out the real one, and then you focus the real one. 
I don't think lifesteal helps in that regard because the illusions will not, like once you can tell who the real hero is, it's not like the illusions are going to lifesteal and suddenly you're like, well, no, I'm not so sure. You know, it's the same guy you picked out. And so I, I, I just don't think it's as good. Plus, I think a lot of illusion heroes provide all the damage they need and you just need to help them pick out targets. You know, think of like Naga, TB, PL, you know, CK, like they kind of have the damage. You just need to help them get auto attacks off. Um, so I, I much prefer helping your team survive so that they're not left alone or providing some crowd control. Let's move on to some offlaners. I wouldn't buy a Vlad for these guys. But, you know, it's like if I have some of these guys and some of these guys, it's now looking like a decent Vlad's game. Um, so Beastmaster provides attack speed. And when your carries have more attack speed, they're going to benefit from the Vlad's a bit more. Um, plus, he has all the little summons, which get a bit of a bonus damage. Magnus, when you pick Magnus, you're usually playing around Empower for your team anyways, which means you're doing like a, a four protect one kind of strategy. And so like, OK, if we're all in on the, um, the Empowered PA, then like might as well boost them up with the Vlads as well. Uh, plus when they're all like uh, RP together, you want to get like as much AOE damage in there as possible. So buffing up your carry to do more damage in that time, pretty good. Night Stalker, another right clicker, lots of damage. Doesn't benefit as much from the bonus damage, but really likes the lifesteal to stay on the front lines and keep fighting. Downside is he like tends to run away from you. So it's like, you know, he's like so far in that he actually doesn't get to use your Vlads very much. Um, Slarder can lifesteal off Bash. That's another one that can do it. Um, and he tends to not go as deep as Night Stalker, so it's a little easier to stay on top of him. These guys can build like their own Vlads, to be honest. Um, and when, I'll say, ne don't have two Vlads. It's not good. You know, so if you see someone else building a Vlads, don't buy it. Um, but if they're not buying it, you know, they're like good candidates to justify like, okay, I've got like three decent Vlads teammates. Like, I'll pick one up. Underlord. This Atrophy Aura counts to bonus damage, so he doesn't get, you know, he doesn't like get like 300 extra damage from Vlad's. But the lifesteal when you're hitting for like 400 is really nice for this guy. And this guy just wants to like tank up. And he tends to be an aura builder. So if he's already building a bunch of auras, like why not add in another one and just make your team really strong? If you already want to play together because you have an Underlord, like just kind of like commit to that. In Nature's Prophet, He's going to be pretty active. He gets he actually gets a lot of intelligence items with his uh, item builds. So he gets some bonus damage, and you know he, he's never going to complain about lifesteal. Plus, he gets all these little summons, so they all get a little bit of extra damage. That may not change a team fight, but if you win the team fight from some like bonus damage from your Vlads, then when you're like pushing towers, all the little summons with extra damage that starts to add up. So I think it's pretty nice. So once this not going to be so good. It's not just against these five heroes specifically. They're just representing a general trend. Okay, for AA, this is specifically the AA hero. He just stops lifesteal. And so if no one can lifesteal, it's just not going to be a very good Vlad's game, right? Um, this also kind of goes in line with like Ashivas and Scotty Spirit Vessel. So if you see those items in the game already by the time you're thinking about a Vlad's, you know, eh, maybe not such a good Vlad's game. Now Zeus represents burst heroes. We talked about wanting long, drawn-out, right-click fights. When the enemy team, or your team for that matter, has a hero like Zeus, has like... Ah, Lena's got like burst and right-click. Uh, Necrophos and Pugna, actually, they fit this. Um, you know, if the fight's going to be decided in one second from who gets like the burst kill on the other carry, what's the point of a long, drawn-out item, right? The fight's over. So against these kind of heroes, not so great. Necrophos and Pugna, the reason they were originally on the list is for things like Decrepify or his Shroud, where you can't auto-attack. Uh, they represent heroes where high mobility, um, ethereal, whatever, puck, disjointing everything, being gone. Like, if you can't right-click, you're getting no value from Vlads. Um, so when there's a lot of heroes like that, also not a very good Vlads game. Same with, like, OD, when he banishes people. You know, you just can't right-click, and you're sitting there like, I need to lifesteal, but there's nothing for me to hit, and then you die. Um, so, not so great against these kind of heroes. Now, damage over time, I wanted to specifically call out. We saw that if you can auto-attack, the lifesteal could actually be better than a mech. But it is tough 
to get auto attacks against like these kind of heroes frequently because he like slows so much. Um, same with him. And it just becomes difficult for your carry to actually get damage in. Um, and for that reason, I think Vlad's is okay, but that like a mech or a pipe is usually better um, because the pipe is just straight up 400 barrier and the magic resist and uh, HP regen. So like even if your carry can't get auto attacks off, you get this huge defensive boost against these kind of heroes. And I just think that's more reliable than a Vlad's. But if someone else has the pipe or a glimmer, then like, okay, why not throw in a Vlad's too if we have the room for it? But maybe getting something like a Scythe or a Yule's will help to control enemy heroes more so that your carry can actually get auto attacks in rather than a Vlad's. However, Doom specifically, I do think Vlad's is like kind of good actually because if your carry can just ignore Doom and auto attack through it, then that's fantastic. And if you look at the damage per second, 25, 40, 55, like if your carry has a decent amount of damage and they auto attack pretty fast, if you provide them lifesteal, they can just heal straight through Doom and they can just ignore it. Whereas otherwise, they have to like get out and be scared. So some heroes are better at this than others. So like someone like Morphling, if he gets doomed, he does not want to fight because he survives by using all his spells and he can't do that. But someone like Troll or Ursa, if they get doomed, if they have some lifesteal and damage and you provide even more, they're like, all right, I, I'll just auto attack and we'll just win, you know? So... In those kind of games, when you can ignore Doom, Vlad's is pretty good. If you can't ignore Doom, then Vlad's is not good, and you're better off getting some kind of like heal item to try to help them survive because they're not going to be auto-attacking. They're going to be running away and trying to wait at the edges until they're done being doomed, and then they'll rejoin the fight. And if they're doing that, they're just not auto-attacking. So that's it. I hope that helps. I know it is a niche item. I, As a position 5, I very rarely buy Vlad's. Um, there are going to be other heroes that can buy it, and you know that's probably going to change in the next patch anyways. Um, but Vlad's as an item comes down to can my carry or my team right-click a ton? If they can, then it's usually a decent Vlad's game as long as I don't need anything else. If they can't, or if they're only going to auto-attack, like Sven, he, he only wants to auto-attack like three times and hopefully kill off a ton of heroes. Then the Vlad's is like, it's like okay on him, but like not that great. Um, but someone like Troll who like, I'm coming in, I'm going to hit 50 times. He loves Vlad's. He loves it. Um, so I hope that helps. If you have questions, as always, let me know. And uh, if there was any like issues with the video, let me know because I have a temporary setup. So you probably can tell the background's a little different. Audio is probably a little different. Let me know if there's any major issues and I'll try to fix it. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. I don't know when that'll be, but hopefully soon. Goodbye.